Hello and welcome to Bub's World. I'm your host Bub and today we're going to get through a huge stack of books that I picked up from mycomicshop.com. Links down below if you've, it's the worst kept secret in, in comics. Uh, really I do probably, I'd say 75% of my comic buying is all on mycomicshop.com and then I'd say probably I don't know, 10% on on Instagram, and then probably the rest of it, the other 15% or so, is uh, probably in person. So that's how I roll. That's that's how I pick up. I love to shop in person, but it's just one of those things. So when you can't get to a shop, or if the shop doesn't have what you're looking for, a lot of us live in smaller areas, smaller towns, and we only have one or two shops in the area. And often they're not real big on back issues and they're only giving you 10 or 15% off on your pre-orders. I'm getting 35% off my pre-orders at mycomicshop.com. Plus I'm getting my, um, back issues, you know, two, $3, $4. I mean, that's a lot better and you can combine it all for, for shipping. So it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I highly recommend it. So if you don't know about it, find out about it. And uh, so let's get to my, this is my month haul. I have them hold all my books and they ship it to me once a month. So, uh, all right, let's make me small and get to the haul. Yo, there it is. All right, first up, a trade. <laughs> so I've been eyeballing this one. I just really like the cover a lot, uh, but it's got some good stuff in it too. So first off, we have a Star Trek, the Gold Key Archives. Check that out, it's a hardback. And it looks like it has issues one through six of the Gold Key Star Trek run. So, which I believe is the first Star Trek comics. So, there you go. We're going to have to move that soon because it takes up so much space. But look how thick it is. I mean, my gosh. It's a beast. I'll open it at the risk of offending someone who wants me to keep it near mint. But it is really cool. And what's great about reading old Star Trek uh, comics, and really any comic that's well written uh, and is based off of existing properties like uh, Star Trek or Star Wars, um, what's fun about, or, or even James Bond, I have some. What's fun about that is that if the art is done just right and the dialogue is done just right, when I'm reading that, I hear the voices in my head from all the um, different actors that played these roles. So it really is kind of a more dynamic sounding thing. You know, when I'm reading other comics, especially indie books, I have to kind of invent the voice for myself, which is fun in its own right, but kind of be, it's another level of immersion when I'm reading these types of uh, books because it just, it just feels more real to me and I'm kind of connecting the dots in my mind and making it all more like more or less like a show or a movie. So it's a different feeling, it's a different type of reading. So if you've never done it before, I highly recommend you pick up something similar to this. If not a nice read through type volume, then check out some comics that are, that are done in some properties of actors and, and things where you know the voices and the cadence of the way that they speak very well. So Star Trek is a great one for that because every character speaks a different way and has a very distinct voice and tone. So works great for it. All right, next up, we got Victims number one. And I think that completes my Victims run finally. Now, I don't know how much I've shown you all of my Victims run, but old Jambo Comics got me um, looking at these for the first time. So I'm glad he did and I've enjoyed them. Uh, next we got oh and it's just cool I mean just kind of they're all kind of bondagey and very very well drawn and the interiors are pretty solid too so Eternity Comics there uh, next we got Invincibles Red Sonia number nine so it says down here Frank Cho Dynamite 10 of 10 but there's one left so because it's obviously number nine so when number 10 comes out that'll be the last of this series I have them all to date so then I'll have the entire Frank Cho run, all 10 of them. I'll take a couple of pictures, decide which ones I like the best, and get rid of the rest. That's kind of how I do it. Uh, next, we got Harley and Ivy, Love on the Lamb. Uh, this one's by Judd uh, Winnick and Joe Chiodo. I, I, I pronounce it Chiodo. Uh, but this, this cover by Chiodo is absolutely stellar. I mean, check that out. I move a few books here, but check that out that is great let's see if we can get up close it's a 
Charlie. Too cool. That is just too cool. The Joker. I, I just love it. Batman in the corner. Batgirl. Harley Quinn. Poison Ivy. Man, is it good. Chiodo. He does one of the best posteriors in the business, in my opinion. It's funny because it, he does it all well, but his posterior work is some of the best. So there you go. Uh, Harley Quinn, number 10. This is a Dotson cover. Very cool. And that's actually, I guess, Harley Quinn as uh, Batgirl. So I think that's pretty neat. And uh, this is some of my favorite Dotson work is on the Harley Quinn run. Uh, next up, I got to give a shout out to Matilda Gothica, Zlata as we know her off stage. Uh, she made me aware of this book, Hellboy Weird Tales, number six. And this is a great Frank Cho cover with a Jungle Girl on it. So yeah, we're digging that. Nice Frank Cho gorillas on there. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. You can ask, but you're not going to get it. Uh, and... We're going to throw this up here quick, and I know that all my longtime fans will go, Hey, Bob, what are you doing? Oh, my God, I can't believe you picked up one of her books. I did. Oh, Jenny Frizon. Uh, I can actually stand this one. This one's not bad. There's there's things I would have liked to have done better. Uh, her hair could have been a little longer, but it's not bad. And I think for some reason, maybe it's a printing error, but she has better flesh tones on this. And I got to tell you, when I see black and white covers of hers, I like them a lot better. A lot, lot better. So I don't know who's doing her coloring or if she does her own coloring, but I don't like it. Like, I generally don't like that dead look to the skin that, that she always gives everybody. They just look like zombies or something. Zombie skin. Dead body skin. Like, I don't care for that at all. Should have a little color and some life to it. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's why I don't generally pick up a lot of her art. And I realize now after seeing some of her art in um, black and white that I, her lines aren't bad. I can handle her art. I just can't take the color. So maybe I'll pick up some of her black and white variants that are out there. I'm sure that there's a few. All right. Next, I think this is some more uh, Chiodo, if I'm not mistaken. Some more Joe Chiodo. And uh, the Flash Annual, this Pulp Heroes Young Romance. There's a little series they were doing. Uh, so I picked this one up and I picked up another one, which I'll show next. But I actually, I like this one quite a bit. Flash looks a little extra muscular there, but the lady's looking perfect. Uh, so I picked that one up and I'll show this other one, even though I don't know if I'm going to keep it. And that's Supergirl Annual uh, number whatever. 1997 annual, I guess, is what they're going with. That other one was, they're both 97 annual, so I guess that's what they're going with here. But uh, that one's a bit much. Like, it's okay. I didn't pay much for it, so I'll probably let this one go. I'm not as crazy about that one, but I think it works for that one very well. Good timing. Just found out that they're going to do an animated movie with this or something, so The Goon here it's been in one of those things that's in production hell been there forever but uh the goon by eric powell this is goon number one now this is not the first appearance of the goon this is the first dark horse run of the goon when when the when dark horse took over the goon uh but this is kind of the premiere run so the first run doesn't get as much attention this if you're looking for the goon you know and, and you enjoy the storylines most of it comes out of this so but very cool uh, the Goon number one, never had a copy, and then I ended up with two copies, and I sold one at the recent convention that I did, and, and here's my other one, so. Ooh, we're getting into some Hughes action. You know, I'm digging that. Check that out. Yeah, baby. Ah, oh, Catwoman 74. I've been looking for this book for a long time. Had a watch list set up. It finally popped up. I would snatched it up. This might be the best one of the Catwoman run. There's so many good covers in that Catwoman run that Adam Hughes did, but I think I like this one the best. And I know everybody will say um, that they like best probably the, the uh, mugshot cover. That's very popular, of course. And I do like that one. I don't own that one. I'm on the hunt for it, I'm trying to get it for about a hundred bucks or less. Uh, but man, that book just shot up. I remember not buying it when it was 50 bucks and just saying that's too much for that book and now it's like 
a three hundred dollar book, and I'm like, really? Like I'd be willing to eat my words and pay a hundred for it, but I'm not paying three. So anyway, Catwoman seventy four. I think this one has got to be one of the best. And I don't know if there's glass in that frame or not. It's hard to tell, but I don't see a reflection in her goggles. So that may, but then there's like a little, I don't know. I guess she's standing in front of the safe maybe. I don't know. You see any glare there? There's a little bit of glare. There may be glass there. I don't know, but it's very nice. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Catwoman number 74. All right, next up, we got my girl, your girl, our girl, Linda Carter with Wonder Woman 77 special number four. And I think this is the last one. So I think I might have the complete set of this as well, or I'm missing one. I think I miss, might be missing number three. So I have to check on that. But Wonder Woman 77 special starring Linda Carter. Uh, and I don't think that's a picture. I think that that is drawn. Uh, but it's very good. Very good. Well done. Well done. All right. Next up. Oh, sorry. This was out of order. But we got Harley Quinn number three. And it's got a cool uh, Catwoman, Harley Quinn, and Poison Ivy uh, pillow fight going on there. So just some good old cheesecake action. Oh, boy. So then every now and then you come across a book and I, I don't know where I saw this book. I honestly, I don't think that I would have found it on my own. So someone must have shown this book off or I looked for it. I don't know, but somehow it ended up on my want list I, and it came up. One came up for sale. I jumped all over it and it had been at least a few months since I had added it. Maybe I don't know where I saw this book, but somebody showed it off. I'm sure. Here is Space Sirens number one. Very nice. And there's only so many of these books. It's a Comax is a publisher. I'm thinking about collecting every book that they put out, which is only like 10 books. Uh, and there's only like two or three that are not really up my alley. This is right up my alley. Maybe somebody mentioned it to me and said that it was similar to Planet Comics number one by Dave Stevens. Where she's riding the rocket so or the the airplane i don't know but for whatever reason here it is she's about got whiplash her head's turned around so far but uh we'll deal with that another day so there you go space sirens number one and i think it's of one so <laughs> don't get excited for a longer run than that and actually when i got it there was no notation uh on my comic shop.com but inside the inside cover was signed I would show you, but the splash page is a little risque. <laughs> uh, the inside is definitely for mature readers. So, uh, but it was signed by by the cover artist. So it's very cool. And much of the book is done by this same artist. And it's really quite fantastic. So I'm kind of hunting down the rest of his work and I might make a little collection of this guy. I forget his name, Buckman or something like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little more work on it and see what I can find. So, all right, next up, we got Undersea Agent. Don't remember who showed this off either. I watch a lot of YouTube, but I just don't have a lot of time as much as I did with the new job. So, uh, but somebody showed this off in a haul or had it for sale. Sometimes that'll happen. So one of the ways that I use mycomicshop.com is that if someone has a sale, um, like an like a, a auction or something, you know, on YouTube or whatever, and I'll kind of watch in the background. Sometimes I don't say anything because I don't want to draw attention to myself. I'm just sitting there watching, hoping for a good book at a fair price. And oftentimes I'm disappointed. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's a good book at an unfair price. And oftentimes there's no good book at all. But when a good book comes up and I don't think it's a fair price, but I'm interested in a book, like a book that I've never seen before. I'm like, wow, I like that. And I want that. I'll keep a tab open and I look at mycomicshop.com and I see how much they're selling for. And then I, if there's one available and I like it well enough, I buy it. And and I don't fool with whatever the auction sale is, you know. I just buy it off mycomicshop.com and it shows up in a couple weeks. So, there you go. Damsel in Distress, In the Bikini, Undersea Agents. I mean, what's not to like about that? That is killer. Ooh, we snuck in some moderns here. How did that happen? We have Rocketeer number three. Uh, this is The Great Race, Rocketeer The Great Race. So this is the, the ongoing series. 
So I add, I, I always have some pre-orders. So this would be one of my pre-orders. So I didn't pay $4.99 for it. I paid 35% off that. So it, it usually ends up covering all the shipping and still saving. We got a little uh, presumed bondage there. She's got the gag order on. And it uh, looks like he's in Paris, right? So very cool. And we have another one focusing on Betty. With number three as well. So here's the variant. With the perfectly placed uh, jet spots for the helmet. See that? Little black spots on the helmet there. Look like mouse ears. So there you go. The Great Race. It's a pretty cool one. I like that. I thought maybe I would get both of them and then see which one I liked best. But uh, I like them both. So I'll probably keep them both. All right. Next we got... Ooh, I'm excited about this one. Popeye, number three from IDW. And you say, but what are you excited about this one? It's by Dean Yeagle. So you all may not know who Dean Yeagle is, but some of the more distinguished gentlemen in the audience may recognize that name. He was a prolific Playboy artist. And uh, so the cartoons, the Playboy cartoons, and you know, it's an old joke to say, I only read Playboy for the articles. Well, I read Playboy, or I used to, for the cartoons. Uh, they were hilarious. I thought they were hilarious, and they were really well drawn, and they were cute and sexy and just just good stuff. And um, Dean Yeagle, man, if you if you remember his name or just look him up and check out some of his art, and he was big with uh, I think his big creation was Mandy, if I recall the name of it, and she was like a blonde hair girl with like pigtails or whatever you call them. And uh, so very cool stuff. But to see an olive oil done by Dean Yeagle, I just thought that was hilarious because this guy's known for drawing very, very sexy, you know, women, cartoonish type looking women. So to get, uh, <laughs> get olive oil done, which couldn't be less attractive than olive oil. So I think that's just absolutely hilarious. Look at those big feet. Oh, my gosh. Good stuff. All right. Another guy that's known for drawing good girls is... Um, Frank Cho again making yet another stop on our tour of comics and this fella is a brand new book so I pre-ordered this and it's E-T-E-R so it's emergency room so if you can read it there it says so Mr. Bo Blatt what brings you in today look at her yeah and then the robot says migraine and then the little thing says bleep bloop the clean bot so he's got an axe in his head and she's asking why he's there. So funny stuff. Cool cover. I don't know what's on the inside. Probably nothing I'll read, but I haven't had good luck with Upshot. It's not one of my favorite independent uh, uh, brands. You know, they're, they're, they're okay. Um, I've read a couple of things, but it's like they like to do short little series, which is nice. I like that. But then they don't seem to stick the landing. Like they start off interesting and then they get kind of ramp up pretty good. But by issue three, and usually there's like four to six issues. And by issue three, it's like already starting to get a little middling. And then by issue five, you're like, how are they going to wrap this up? And then issue six, you're like, oh, they didn't. You know, <laughs> they just they just crapped it up. All right. So I'm not a big Upshot fan, but I know there's tons of people out there that love their writing. And, and really, hey, at least they're getting top-notch quality cover art uh, from my buddy Frank Cho. All right. Uncanny X-Men number 511 this is a second printing variant with a cool greg land cover you guys know i'm a huge greg land fan and and yet to date i don't have any original art by greg land um and the reason that i've waited is because he generally i think he lives in the area maybe ohio or something and uh, i generally see him at conventions uh so i'm kind of reluctant to commission something online and then wait six weeks or longer and all that routine when I feel like I'd rather have maybe a simpler sketch from him in person and just be happy but I've got tons of signed books by him and pretty much all of them I've requested the signature in person so really digging this I think he's one of the few guys who does both men and women well uh, whereas like Frank Cho does men well too but like Adam Hughes his guys are not usually my favorite. If there's a guy in the cover, I'm usually not digging it at all. All right. Here we go. Here's some Conan 
you had to forgive me. I still got the sticker on this because I, I can't find my magazine bags and boards. I moved them because I use them so rarely and I can't find them. So here's the Savage Sword of Conan, the Darksome Demon of Babathon. Yes. And there's the Babathon right there. There you go. I think this is a Frazetta cover. Uh, you all correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's a Frazetta cover because I tend to only get the Conans when they're artists that I know already. And of course, the interiors are all great. Like you can pick up any of these Savage Swords of Conan and they're just they're just awesome. So shout out to Bill, Comic Mag Musings. If you're a big Conan fan, you'll enjoy his channel. You have to suffer through his wry sense of humor. But but other than that, you got this. And then also uh, Gary uh, does a good one uh, as well. So um, check check those guys out and, uh, you know, tell them, tell them Bub sent you. Uh, but he, he does like a Conan... Um, you know, Conan of the week or something like that little feature. Uh, we're getting into a couple more mags. Here is back issue number 47 with a Dave Stevens cover and interview. And honestly, the cover itself isn't great. It's okay. I don't even see these wearing his jetpack, so it's okay. But I'm interested in the story inside. Now we're going to need some blue tape for this thing. Holy moly. Look at that. We have an emergency situation. In Bub's world, we're going to need... I didn't know I needed this much tape. Oh my gosh, I don't know if this is going to be enough tape. All right. All right, we got that one covered. And we got them covered. Whew! That was a close one. All right, so here is Gorgeous Galaxy Gals with Star Femmes number one. Now, I had Star Femmes number two, which I just happened to find at a convention. I'd never heard anything about it, knew nothing about it, and it was awesome. So I was like, I got to find the number one. I bought this sight unseen. There was not even a picture available for what it looked like. And I was like, you know what? Whatever it looks like, I'll take it. And I bought it. And it was did not disappoint. It's a fantastic mag. So I highly recommend Star Frames 1, Star Frames 2 by Paragon Publish, uh, Publications. Very awesome. So if you get a chance to check those out, check those out. Okay, and the rest of these were books that I think I've already shown. Yes, they are. Woohoo! We win. All right, so that's it. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. We'll catch you next time in Bub's World. And remember to uh, <laughs> read a comic. Why not? And don't apologize for the glare. Bye-bye.